Hello everyone. So this is going to be my first video for my differential equation series. And if you don't know how these videos are going to work, I would recommend that you go see the introductory video first and then come back to this one to see how you can best utilize these videos to improve your performance in differential equations. So starting out, it only makes sense to first start with classifying differential equations. So, what's our motivation here? If we can properly classify DiffEQs, we're going to be able to execute the proper method in order to solve each equation in a systematic, methodical manner. I often tell my students that just identifying what kind of equation we have is half the battle. If you can properly note and identify the type of equation and what order it is, etc., etc., you'll be in a much better scenario than just trying to mess around with the, the equation blindly. So now that we know why we want to do this, it'll, the next step is what is a differential equation? A differential equation is an equation that, in, that contains derivatives of one or mo more unknown functions with respect to one or more independent variables. So from this definition stems two kinds of differential equations. We have ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. Ordinary differ differential equations will be known as ODEs and partial DFEQs will be known as PDEs. So looking at the left hand side here real quick, an ordinary differential equation is an equation that has derivatives that depend on only one independent variable. So an example of this would be dy dt is equal to the sine of t. You'll notice that we only have the derivative of y with respect to t and that is equal to sine of t. And then another one is the second derivative of y with respect to t is equal to t cubed. Again, we're only taking derivatives of y with respect to only one variable t. And then finally, t squared y dt squared plus dy dt plus y is equal to t to the four. Again, we're just summing uh, derivatives of y only with respect to t. Now, looking at this right-hand side, PDEs, and I wrote a little smiley face here because this I just find so fascinating. These are equations that the derivatives depend on two or more independent variables. These three equations, while they may not look too terribly long or difficult, uh, take a student, at least at the undergraduate level, about a year to truly get a feel for what they're describing. So this first one here, du dt is equal to k d squared u dx squared you'll notice that you're taking the derivative of u with respect to time and also with respect to space. So this is known as the heat equation. And this k is just an arbitrary constant that models the diffusion or how the heat uh, behaves in for any point x and t. And so this can be applied for mechanical engineers. You'll, you'll use this in higher seeing how heat fluctuates within a certain material. Um, you know, as a, my background is electrical engineering, so I've actually had to use this when seeing how like carrier concentrations behave in a certain semiconductor device. Um, yeah, there's a lot of applicability here. The next equation, d squared u dt squared is equal to c squared d squared u dx squared, is known as the wave equation. And so this is telling you that the second derivative of your function with respect to time is equal to the speed of light squared times the second derivative of that function with respect to space. This is used a lot in electrical engineering. Um, again, I'm going to draw from that just because that's my background. And so this can be used to model how waves propagate, um, how vibrations happen on the head of a drum, etc. And then this last one is called Laplace's equation. Basically, the second derivative of a function v with respect to space, the space coordinate x, plus the second derivative of v with respect to the space coordinate y is equal to zero. The applicability here is that uh, sometimes you're going to want to find how voltage and charge are related. And if you look at Maxwell's equations, they can be related in a form of Laplace's equation. And so you can theoretically solve for voltage and charge on, in a given scenario. So if you find this course very interesting, I encourage you to explore PDE just because you'll use a lot of what you learn in this class and you'll see that the um, applications are endless. So after that it makes sense to go into 
the order of an ordinary differential equation. So the order is given as the order of the highest derivative in the equation. So all you have to do is look at the highest derivative. So for this first one, y prime prime plus y to the 7 is equal to t squared. Here we don't care about this y to the 7 because that's not a derivative. We only care about this one here. So because we take the highest derivative here is second, the second derivative, this is of second order. Same thing here down below. We have y triple prime plus y prime is equal to sine t squared. So we have y prime and y triple prime. The higher one is clearly the triple prime, and so this is third order. Great. Now, next thing to talk about is linear versus nonlinear ODEs. The motivation, before I even get into what a linear ODE looks like, linearity is something that we want to exploit as much as we can in this class, because if we have a linear ODE, we can apply many methods and many uh, just principles about superposition to linear equations. And so if we are able to identify something as linear, we can just go ahead and drop everything and just apply superposition principles, a linear first order integrating factor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let's consider an nth order ODE. So nth being uh, it's of order n. So the highest derivative is n. So we have here a0 of t, so only a function of t, times our highest derivative power, plus a1 of t, so it may or may not be different than a0 of t, times y to times a derivative down, plus dot dot dot, keep going, your a's uh, subscripts increase, and then you get a n of t times y. So y, um, you may want to consider this as the zeroth derivative, so there's no derivative here, it's just the dependent variable y. And then all this is equal to some function of t, g of t. Now, an ODE is linear if all of these a0, a1, a2, dot, 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 an are strictly, and I mean this very carefully, strictly as in only functions of the independent variable t, and if the equation can be written in this exact form. So looking at that, let's look at these three equations right here. We have y prime prime plus t squared y prime plus sine ty is equal to 7t. Now just compare this with this top equation. So this y prime prime has an implied 1 in front of it. And that's OK. That's a function strictly in t. So that part checks out. t squared y prime. That would be like this term over here in the equation. Our t squared is our a1 of t, and then y prime is still valid. And then our a n of t, in this case, would be sine of t, which is still only a function of t. And so multiply by y, that seems good. And then our g of t, in this case, is 7t. So this is linear. <laughs> Great. So now let's look at the second one. We have y prime prime, still an implied one in front. So that works. Then we have a plus y, y prime. Now, y is not strictly a function of t. Therefore, this term makes it nonlinear. And you can check the other terms. The other terms are actually OK. But because we have that one term that makes it nonlinear, this whole thing is nonlinear. Now, something that confuses a lot of my students, and I'll try to make this as clear as possible, is this third one. So we have, again, this implied 1, which is this is fine. This part is OK, because we have our a0 of t is equal to 1, y double prime, fine. t squared, only a function of t, still OK, times y prime, good. So this is check, check. Sine of t times y, still good. Check. Aha. y squared. y squared is not strictly a function of t, like our g of t up here. Therefore, that makes this nonlinear. So check both sides of the equation um, to satisfy this overall equation, and you should be set. Now, next order of business is homogeneous versus non-homogeneous. So again, we're going to look at our equation for 
uh, linear versus nonlinear, except we're going to focus in on this g of t on the right-hand side. So if our g of t is equivalently 0 for all t, then the equation is homogeneous. If our g of t is not equal to 0 for all t, then this equation is non-homogeneous. So looking at a couple examples, this first one, y prime prime plus t squared y prime is equal to 0. So up here, again, we have the implied 1 in front of y double prime, t squared in front of y prime, so that checks out. But we only really care about g of t. g of t is equal to 0 on the right-hand side, so this is homogeneous. The second example, and this is a classic mistake, which is why I wrote this, is we have our implied 1 again in front of y double prime, so that's fine t squared y prime, that's also fine. And many students will look at this and be like, oh, this is a zero right here, this must be homogeneous. But look at this term. We have a t on the left-hand side that's not attached to a y, it's not attached to anything. So really we could write this equation as y prime prime plus t squared y prime is equal to minus t. At that point, it's very clear that because of this term, this is non-homogeneous. And that should get you started for now. Um, this is directly out of the Brennan book, uh, chapter 1, section 3. So if you need more practice on classifying equations, be sure to look at those. In the next section, we'll actually be solving some problems and seeing um, just exactly what ODEs are all about. So thank you for listening.